It was April of 2020 when I was working as an RN on an outpatient observation unit. And I got a message on a Friday night that I would be, I guess, meant to go to the COVID unit or transfer to the COVID unit for that weekend. And I thought about that call to rise long before I received that message. You know, COVID-19 was in, you know, the news. It was a new staple, as was um, the sentiment that healthcare heroes on the front lines were heroes. That word, heroes, uh, it weighed so heavy on my shoulders, yet I wanted to rise to that ideal, but I was so scared. But I realized that fear and love are one and the same. They can either bend you and make you weak, or they can make you strong and move you forward. I chose the latter. Number three, I walked through the ante room, the air controlled ante room onto the COVID unit and I found myself surrounded by a sea of seal blue nursing scrubs. I was greeted kindly and escorted off and shown where to put on my own scrubs and where to get my own PPE. And soon I returned to that sea as a piece of it rather than just an onlooker. Number three, I got my patient assignment and I realized very quickly one-to-one -one patient care on a COVID floor takes a lot of time. I would spend an hour or more in a patient's room before I would find myself in the hallway again. And one time I came out in the hallway and I saw a small cluster of nurses talking and I knew immediately what they were talking about. Someone was dying on the other side of that hall of COVID-19. So I listened and I watched. I was drawn to that dance, the dance I think every nurse knows. You know, when that last song is played, we move silently and we move intentionally, all taking a turn. And I saw one sea of blue hero replacing another in and out of that room. And I just kept watch. I returned to my task but I never lost sight of that room on the other side of the hall. I guess I was waiting for my turn. I was waiting for my turn to join that dance. When that patient's nurse, um, the primary nurse actually got an admission, I, I noticed that and I thought, this is my time. So I put on my PPE and I put on my protective gear and I opened that door and I shut it behind me and I remember looking at the door before I turned to see the man in the bed and I could tell he was struggling to breathe as the sheet rose because his lungs and his his stomach were pushing forward in a way that was not natural wasn't how you and I breathe he was struggling and I went down, I grabbed a chair and I sat down beside him. And I remember brushing his hair, Ross's forehead. I looked at his name band, only remembering his first name. And I held his hand. And I said the Lord's Prayer. I think I made small talk with him. You know, I asked him if he had pets and I knew he couldn't respond to me, but I know hearing is the last sense to go. So I spoke to him like I would speak to someone I loved. I told him I was there and I think I sat for a long time before I finally said to him, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I can't fix this. I was so sorry that he had to meet God in this sterile room. But I told him I was here and that when he saw that light, he should go towards it. So I took my turn. Um, I came out and I went about the, the tasks that I had left, but um, that it changed me. Um, I think it changed me for a lot of reasons, but 
you know, I bought a newspaper every single day that week. And I thought, I'm, I need to find this man. I need to know, did he, who did he love? Did he have family? Where did he go to school? I needed to know more. And after a week of buying newspapers, I ran into his primary nurse and I said to her, I said, I didn't see um, so-and-so's obituary. And I was wondering why. And she looked at me and she said, well, he's a ward of the state. He's from a nursing home. So I knew he was from a nursing home and being a ward of the state essentially means that family either cannot provide care or they um, were care was taken from them. So it was relinquished to the state. So he wouldn't have a, an obituary. He wouldn't have a funeral. He wouldn't have any of the things we would want for someone we cared about. And it was heartbreaking. Um, so I wrote about that and I posted it on social media. I'm a writer, so it's just natural for me to just put down all my feelings. Uh, and a professor um, that I had in nursing school saw it and together we put together an article because she loved what I wrote and it inspired her. And we were published in Nursing 2020 in the December issue. And it just caught on like wildfire. All of a sudden, you know, I told somebody at work and all of a sudden my CNO knows and now my CEO is reading what I wrote about that patient at an open board meeting. And I thought, this is incredible. Um, and then I get a phone call from a local um, newscaster from a local station asking if she could meet me. She wanted to talk to me about what I had written about this man. And in that moment, I realized all of this. It, it was done intentionally. I was meant to enter that room. I was meant to sit at that man's bedside because maybe God wanted him to be remembered. And although I will remember him forever, everybody I've shared his story with, it goes on and on and on. So now he will be remembered, hopefully as long as he's worthy of. In April of 2020, a man died of COVID-19. He died in room number three and his name was Keith. Okay, Greg. Thank you so much, Hope. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting me share it. I appreciate it's been it. such an honor to work with you on this. Have oh, you been inspired you. to write about other patients? over the years, or is this a first? Um, I write about all, yes, I do write about patients all the time, not using their name, not using the situation, but sure. um, it's an outlet. And if somebody can learn something from what I write, great. That's, I think that's what I'm put here to do outside of nursing. Mm -hmm. um, but this in particular, it, it changed everything. I think, especially because he is a nursing home patient, he didn't get the recognition that I wanted him to, but now he did. And everybody hearing my story tonight is just another, just icing on the cake. Yeah, it's great. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Hope. Really, Thank really so appreciate much. your taking the time and care to provide him this legacy. Yeah. Absolutely. Our next story.